over. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. My losses are going to be three of that, three of this, and one of this, and I get it all back. See, now this is an auto battle. I can, I can accept. Cancel, we're almost to Dresden. Thank you. Enter Citadel. I have a feeling the game just crashed. Nope, 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 there, there it is. It's back. Alright, good. It's lagging like hell now, though. Okay. A Kellett in a well-worn travel robe with deep hood offers you a respectful bow. His voice is quiet and emotionless. Greetings, Commander. To be granted an audience with a figure of such importance is a great honor. Your victories have impressed and inspired me, which is why... I wish to do my part in the crusade. Who are you? The visitor quiet word sounds like a rustling of pages, dry and impersonal. My name is Velg, and I am a Kelid. My lineage dates back to the Scar Sarkorian clans, and bond of kinship have always been sacred to my family. When the war wound opened, my ancestor fled Sarkoris, but they did not forget their homeland. Even before the crusade began, my great-great-grandfather marched in the defense of our people. He perished, as they all did. My great-grandfather and his eldest son joined the First Crusade. My grandfather joined the Second. Our family warriors have fought in every crusade, and that is why our bloodline is now extinct. They say this crusade will be the last, and so I've come alone, for there is no one else. Alas, I am no warrior, but I still wish to be of use to you. Then how are you going to help me? His word, devoid of color and emotion, run together to form mon a, a monotonous, endless stream. For 23 years, I have been gathering documents on Sakoris. They contain num numerous mentions of the history of the Blackwater clan. The clan was beset by demons as its members had dedicated themselves to creating a powerful weapon against the world wound. The clan needed more time, but no support came from their neighbors, and so the Blackwaters were destroyed. But the fate of the clan is not important right now. What is important is that thanks to a certain ancient map, I have been able to pinpoint the location of their settlement. If you go there, you'll be able to verify my findings, and if you happen to find a weapon that will help you fight the demons, it will bring me satisfaction and pride. My life will have purpose. What kind of weapon? My thoughts on this matter are pure speculation. Perhaps it was a blade that could cut down even a demon lord, or an artifact that could call upon an endless host of spirits, or a circlet that could reverse the flow of time or erase the planar invader from reality. The Blackwater clan operates in secrecy to protect their work from spies, unfortunately an ever-present concern, and to avoid drawing the demon's attention before the time was right. You have an odd way of speaking. His pale, expressionless face twists into a poor approximation of an apologetic smile. I am a scholar. I know how to speak through manuscripts and prefer to express my thoughts using my quill instead of my tongue. Social interaction is not my area of expertise, so I ask for your understanding when it comes to my rather rudimentary communication skills. <laughs> I like number five. You know, it's just random. It's like, execute him. What? Why? <laughs> um, thank you. I'll put this information to good use. I mean, no reason why I distrust him, right? It pleases me to be of use to you. Commander, Anevia greets you with a slight nod. I have some information for you. Though what I found out is mostly innocent, it might cause a concern. Concern? What do you mean? 
It's all about well-being of one of your companion. Oh, Wolfjit? I want him back. Uh, tell me. Soldier have been gathering in the graveyard to play cards. We usually turn a blind eye to such things. Though it's against regulations, we let them enjoy themselves as long as they don't cause too much trouble. And that's usually the case. But recently, my people have noticed... Oh, Socio among them. And the gambling seems to be having an unhealthy effect on him. As you know, I usually keep my... No... What? You mean nose? I usually keep my no out of other people's private affairs? Yeah, I think that's supposed to be nose. Anyways, with all these spies and cultists, I have too much on my plate as it is, but this time is about one someone of your you trust with your life. I don't take him with me, so fine. Uh, so maybe you should do something about it. Is it an is it official business? Just a tip from a friend. You're better off not meddling in the personal affair of others, as am I. Oh, that's a harsh one. Uh, but no. Thank you for the information. You're welcome. A fresh bruise swells on the hunter's cheekbone. Wendorak releases a furious hiss reminiscent of a nest of fighting vipers. I'm so sick and tired of it. I can't tell you what irritates me more. The stupidity of Uplander's way of life or the arrogance with which they call anything else savage tree. Uh, yeah, take a closer look. Under her, her mask of anger, you can clearly see her insecurity and wounded pride. What happened? Avoiding eye contact, you wonder at growls quietly. It was nothing. I just had a run in with a bunch of morons who have craft for brains. Remember how I told you that uplanders sometimes need a good beating just to teach some respect? Well, I had to knock some sense into one of them. Okay. Tell me everything. This crooked tiefling approached me. He was fawning over me and smiling, and he brought me some good wine. And he kept saying that he'd be thrilled if I just take a look at his weapons. He said he was a craftsman and that he'd really be flattered if a fighter of my quality appraised his work. But I did, and he kept pushing. Take a look at this blade. Try this out both, the scumbag. So I chose a dagger for myself, a good one, with a black-ended blade and skinner. I really like it. I picked it up, praised the work, and that horn-headed scum told him he was a decent craftsman and I was impressed and off I went but then he pounced on me grabbed my arm you must understand master that I couldn't let go so I knocked his teeth out with my handle of the very same dagger and he started yelling that I stole from him and a crowd gathered and everyone was giving me dirty looks like they were all so superior as if I was some savage who crawled out of the hole ah uh, I see I got I got the gist Um, uh, okay, none of these options is what I want, like none of them. <laughs> Number five is super sarcastic, and I don't want to say it to her like that. Like, number five is the general sense of where I want to go with it, but the way they write it makes me sound like a complete complete prick and number one through four is just agreeing with her even though she did technically like the situation is going to happen again and we don't explain to her like social things it's dumb. none of these options i like it none, none of them <laughs> uh Fine, we'll just go about it. Uh, let's go number two. This world's full of idiots. Sometimes I feel like knocking a couple of teeth out too. <laughs> Come for a fighter who's unafraid of blades or demon claws? Don't be ridiculous. I knew you would understand. It's not like I give a damn about what they say. Why would I, stupid uplanders? What should I do with the dagger now? 
Uh, yeah, give her 500 gold. I would rather give him food, but as you wish. There you go. Just pay for the damn dagger. Jesus Christ. What kind of dagger is 500 gold anyways? My God. Um. Before you stand a tall, fit man whose dark hair is already tinged with gray, he greets you with a brisk military salute. My name is Captain Silken. My command, I command the vanguard of your mercenary group called the Black Bone Company. We've come from Andorin to assist you. Why will you join us? Queen Galfrey, pray for our services, but please do not think we're fighting for our gold alone. We're true sons and daughters of Andorin, so the ideal of quality, blah, 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 put under your command. Okay, cool. Um, tell me more about your unit. Blackbone Company is proud to be recognized as one of the finest Andorin mercenary regiments. No, we're adventurers eager to get involved in the dangerous enterprise and leave it with pockets full of gold and a clear conscience. Um, tell me about your captain. I don't even know what to say. I'm a soldier, a bit of explorer. Okay. Get on with your duties. Uh, Commander, how's our crusade doing? Our crusade? You weren't exactly thrilled to join the crusaders. Of course I wasn't thrilled, but in unfavorable circumstances, a man cannot allow himself to wallow in groom and despondency. What? A man can do is look on the bright side of the whole situation and change his circumstance as much as possible. I, for instance, am certain that I'd be able to throw a rip-roaring party even in the crater of an erupting volcano with my hands tied behind my back. So, what brings you here? Oh, it's a trif trifling thing. I wish to make a donation to the crusade cause. It seems a smart decision to me because that's good for the crusade and now tightly intertwined with that What's good of yours truly? Uh, I have to give the revenue from my estate a good shake-up and send a few couriers scurrying about. But in the end, I managed to acquire a couple of decent items. All in all, there is a donation to the crusade and its commander. You must try them out yourself. I offer these gifts from the bottom of my heart. One of pox pustules and one of ray of sickening. You know, those two one only cost like 5,000 gold together, right? It's not that expensive. <laughs> I can sense your own agenda and your choice of gifts. Clever. I thought of you while selecting these gifts, and now I must beg your forgiveness and bid you farewell. I still have plans to order and send a package of special gifts to my dearest cousin. Good day, your commandership. It is we, the artistic board of the Next Door Theater. We are still working on our piece about your heroism. We have been taking on a few new crew members, and now we have a master of stage equipment and scenery. It's my granddaughter, Tina. Tina, say hello to the commandership. We are faced with another dilemma. We simply can't decide on the climatic moment for the act that all about the Battle of Dresden. Here, you listen to the options. Option one, the commander, that's you, Launch itself out of a catapult and smashes down the fortress wall, allowing armies to rush inside. Option 2. The commander, you again, masquerade as a succubus and creeps into Dresden in disguise and then open the gates to the crusader. The commander, excuse again, ride to the back, uh, ride to attack on enormous mountain goat. <laughs> or should we call it a battering ram? And it breaks down the city gates. What's that you? Um. I like the goat. Uh, we're still working on that part, your commandership. It's hard to get a goat in the middle of a world wound, especially an enormous one. But we'll think of something. Don't you worry. Do you think the commander mind if we add a goat and the catapult to the show? That way, the bit where he breaks down the gate will be made for much better drama. Did you forget that the role commander is being played by a cyclops? How are we going to launch 
Lampkin out of a catapult. Where are we going to find a catapult that just won't break under his weight? Calm down, Tina. It's just a minor snag. You can't achieve success without a few difficulties along the way. We'll think of something. You'll see. <sighs> okay. Commander, I don't know what exactly the conflict between you and Sir here is, but please resolve it. His ever bright crusaders are a large and an experienced force. Our strategy relies heavily on them. However, they have maintained a separate command structure, but lately Sir Care has stepped back from his duties, leaving people without a clear leadership. The knights are confused. They don't know what to do. Maybe it's time for Sir Care to place his troop under your command. He's not a young man. His position uh, must be challenging for him. Please talk to him. What do you know about him? Just rumors, Commander. They say that his mind is somewhere else all the time. He is anxious, but won't say what happened. Sir Care is respected. When people see him acting strangely, he breathes uncertainty in the ranks. I'll talk to him. Thank you, Commander. It's necessary to maintain our fighting ability. The grim voice of Zacharias the Lich certainly looms behind your mind. Student, you have proven yourself wo a worthy crusader. To defeat the demons in this world, you have fearlessly sought the secret of death. Your determination deserves respect. Now, we can proceed with a great transformation into a Lich. For that, I shall need a suitable laboratory where I can scrutinize and condition your spiritual body in solitude preparing it for rebirth. As for you, you will need a palace from which you can rule over legions of the dead. Give the order to erect a ziggurat in Dresden. It must be an imposing building, one worthy of receiving me as its guests. This is where you will discover eternal life. It, If the need arise to demolish a few bu buildings for the construction, ensure that they are located far enough away from squalor and slums. I do not wish for my ingredients stores to be ravaged by rats. <clears throat> I will demolish each and every house in Dresden if I have to. I need the power you promise. It pleases me to know that I did not err when I choose you to be my student. I have no need for sniveling little cowards. Get on with it. Let's Jesus Christ, there's more things. For later. A sharp-looking Kitsune drive gives you a quick business-like bow. Commander, the matters before us are urgent, so let's not stand on ceremony. I am Lady Konam uh, Konami? Ka Konami? The official attaché of Nerosian. Here are my credentials. Her Majesty has instructed me to lead your Headquarters Diplomatic Council. Uh, CEO Soul. So sealed. Honestly, I was surprised when Lady Konami asked me to join his council, but I will do my best to fill the shoes of a trained diplomat. I, like many nobles, have been trained in diplomacy, and in fact, I hold the title of Royal Emissary. It passes down the Adren... Uh, and Ren our Rende line. I must say that prior to this day, I employed my diplomatic skills solely to undermine Mendev's international reputation. It is time to break that habit. I imagine preventing international scandal will be just as interesting as causing them. Who knows? I might even enjoy it. What is a diplomatic council and why do I need it? To solve matters of politics, of course. The crusade is just more than just battles and sieges. It is? It's the largest military project in all of Avistin, funded by the treasuries of more than a dozen major powers. And each one of those powers, in addition to seeking victory over the demons, also pursues its own goals. The Diplomatic Council will manage this tangle of political interests and prevent the Crusades from losing a favor of influential benefactors. And while we're at it, ensure that Nerosian remains satisfied with the state of affairs. After all, for the last hundred years, the entirety of Mandevian politics has revolved around the crusade in some shape or form. That is why the capital has sent me here to observe, offer suggestions, and keep diplomatic situations under control. Oh. Uh, I see. You've been sent to keep an eye on me. What I gave, whatever gave you that idea, Commander? I'm not your overseer. I'm your loyal advisor. I do not intend to meddle in the way you run things. Just consult you in case where the price of error is too high. Put your trust in me and we'll get along swimmingly. After all, none of us here want to see 
uh, Cheliax and Druma at each other's throats, trying to settle their disputes by using their influence on us as political leverage. Am I wrong? And I doubt you would like it if we made an enemies in the rank of Nerosian nobility who would attempt to undermine your war efforts. This won't happen as long as you trust my experience. Okay. Uh, tell me more about the Counts? So... The Royal Council, operating under Her Majesty, is the highest governing body in Mendev and compromises her most able and trusted servants. It is responsible for day-to-day -day matters of state. They are the hand and the voice of the Queen. The Council that has gathered people from all over walks of life, some of them are nobles, but many more are citizens of humble origins who earn their position through their wit. Many are rich, but fair number of them are more humble means. Some are pious and pure of heart like Lord Inquisitor Kassori and Captain Jasper of the Crusader Heralds. Others are more flexible and ambitious, but each of them faithfully serve Mendez's cause. Um, I have questions about the composition of this council. Do you find someone uh, present surprising? Sosu has never had to deal with problematic concern before. That won't be a problem. In my homeland, Tian Shia... Uh, inviting clerics and paladin of Shalem, the Lady of Chrysanthemums, to take part in diplomatic mission is a common practice. They may not be polit uh, politicians, but their perspective advocate peace, advocate peace and favor balance situations. Uh, I'm flattered by the respect that worshippers of my goddess receive in Lady Konami's homeland. I won't let you down. I will make every effort to prevent your our friends from becoming our enemies why do you want Darren, uh Darren, to take part in the council why because of count arende's influence naturally he's a mendevian aristocrat nobility will be inclined to listen to his opinion and by ensuring the support of the nobles we'll find ourselves powerful allies Darren sneers back at her. Oh, believe me, Lady Konami, I will exert all my efforts and influence to make this council's job exciting. Of course you will. Tell me about yourself. <sighs> it's unbecoming of a diplomat to talk about themselves at length, but how am I to refuse you? I come from Tianxia, from the noble uh, Kitsune. Like any Kitsune, I have always been curious to a fault, and my adventure brought me to Anti uh, Avistan and here in your lands. I met my first and true love, politics. I serve as a diplomat in the court of six different sovereigns, but working for Her Majesty turned out to be the most interesting of all. Such riveting webs of intrigue and interests are spun around the crusade and the world wound. Okay, thank you. So what's on the agenda? I hate to say it, Commander, not everyone in Nerosian is pleased with your progress. Some believe that to use their words, you are out of control and fancy yourself an independent leader. I wouldn't surprise it wouldn't surprise me if you encounter supply distribution in the near uh, future. Oh, I would suggest quelling their anger. Show the capital you haven't forgot about the chain of command. For example, you could hold a parade in honor of Her Majesty. If we need to demonstrate that we're keeping Norosian in mind, why don't we invite the capital's high priest to Dresden? For a religious festival, it will be appropriate and the church support will shield us from the accusation of schemers. Pander to the naysayers? I think not. I propose we hold a parade in your honor. This is your victory and if cousin Galfrey wants to show off in front of the soldiers, she's welcome to capture something of her own. Ooh. Okay. Good choices. Uh, what did I do to incur Nerosian's discontent? You were too good. You reclaimed Canebras. You won the Battle of Dresden. You're a menace to the world wound. Your authority grows and the influence of the Queen's confidence diminishes. This creates the impression that there's only enough space for you at the top. The members of the Royal Council are afraid that you will muscle them out of the political arena altogether. After all, if you're doing so well, maybe Her Majesty doesn't need them that much. Therefore, they might try to discredit you, impede your war effort, reduce the scale of your victories. Make some concessions and they'll see that you're open to negotiations. Alright, I want to hear the opinions of my advisors. Lady can want to look at you surprised. Whatever for, aren't the wishes of the capital obvious enough? Although very well, let us hear their counsel. <sighs> Socio, does inviting the high priest to a festival help us? 
Without a doubt, we should remain loyal to the Queen and respect her hierarchy. But that doesn't mean we have to kowtow to the Royal Council whenever they ask. I think we should neither uh, do their bidding nor seek to quarrel with them. Rather, we should try to take the middle path. The High Priest of Neurosian is a powerful figure, yet he's not a schemer or a politician. By inviting him to the festival, we'll both show that we're not cutting ties with Neurosian and let them know that we have influential friends and are not about to buckle under to the Royal Council. Uh, Deren, what's the point of taunting the capital by throwing a parade in my honor? There is a fine line between taunting and setting boundaries, and between showing respect and putting on a collar. Mind you, I am not suggesting anything treasonous or disrespectful. A parade in your honor is a true hero of the Dresden and Canabras. What could be more natural than that? Besides, a healthy amount of disobedience guarantees that people won't pester you with lectures and nonsense as often. A dozen tutors responsible for my upbringing can attest to that. Next. Provoking the capital will be unwise. We're trying to avoid unpleasant consequences, not expedite them. I am sure that merely an extravagant jest on the Count's part. Alright. Lady Kamani, what will uh, what good will a parade in Her Majesty Honor do? It will be symbolic and affable. Show them how much you respect her value to Her Majesty, the value of Her Majesty. Make a curtsy to those who pay for your arrows, swords, and bread. The Royal Council has power. You wouldn't want to turn those patrons into adversaries and test those influence is greater than yours or theirs. Please them, and they will stop worrying about your loyalty, and you will be able to focus on your war. Bernal the politician. Oh my god. Okay. Jesus, that was so much. Um... Okay, so what does a religious feast do? Energy points become increased by 20% and finance points become reduced by 10% for 30 days. Okay, what about Deeran's choice? Commander's Parade Decree. The cost of recruiting mercenary unit reduced. Material points income reduced by 25% for 30 days. And Royal Parade. Fin finance point increase. Okay, that's the least one. Um, I think since we're playing like semi-evil-ish playthrough, uh, we're gonna go with choice number four. Deerans, organize a parade in my honor. Lavish me with praise and lap parties. Yeah, throw me a big party. Go, do it. A moment, Commander. I understand that you're used to being the highest authority in all matters, but political decisions are an exception. I am a professional in this field. You are not. By ignoring my recommendation, you are not only deliberately seeking conflict with the capital, but disregarding common sense as well. I urge you to reconsider. <laughs> um, you know what? We're gonna go with number one. You think you have the right to talk back to me? Me. I do hope you'll forgive me for this little vote. I am merely doing my job by trying to satisfy my superior from the capital, who are incidentally your superior as well. You're, you invited my companions to the diplomatic council, and now you refuse to listen to their opinions. I'm simply suggesting that you give your companions time to find their feet in the council and to grasp the principle of being a diplomat. Also, if they weren't on the council... Uh, your decision could be mistaken for the decree of a tyrant, and that is definitely not the public image you need. Um, I don't know about that. <laughs> ah, now I understand the role that I've been given, Lady Kamani. I'm supposed to stand by in a pretty doublet and keep my mouth shut. I can promise you the former, but not the latter. I love Daren. He is great. Um, throw me a big parade! Ladies Kimoni's voice hardened. I cannot challenge your decision. However, I have no choice but to inform the capital that you have disregarded my recommendations. Actions like these are precisely what gave Nerosian cause for concern, Commander. I hope you will revise this defiant stance of you in the future. Oh, this is going to be one glorious parade. I'll make sure of it. An appropriate balance between spectacle and military pragmatism. The best musicians playing hymns, aesthetically pleasing warriors, 
After this, recruits from all over Avistans will come running to fight under your banner. That's right. And with that, we can bring this meeting of the Diplomatic Council to a close. It is unfortunate that things were so tense, but I am sure we'll have many more opportunities to resolve any misunderstanding between us. My god, that was so much. There's more? The tall gaunt elf salutes you solemnly. Commander, it is an honor to call you, uh, call this first meeting of the military council together to order. I am Captain Odin, and I have been serving under your command over the, the uh, ever since the assault of the, on the great garrison. I will do my best to be of as much use as to you as possible in this role. The foundation of the military is cold, calculating, and discipline. These are the principles I seek to impart to the Crusaders. If we are to win this war, we must forget about mercy to our enemies, for our troops, and for ourselves. Well, Commander, your sister, Sela, is no renowned general, but she pre spent half her life tussling with evil. It looked like I'll be stepping up on behalf of all the Ayamides faithful here. I hope my advice will prove useful to you. Master, your army needs to change. The Uplanders have already proven that their methods of warfare are lacking, and their fastidious leads, oh, fastidiousness leads to uneasy losses. I'll teach them how to cast aside their morals and destroy the enemy by the most ruthless means available. The first issue on the military council's agenda is the reorganization of troops. Our inventory has been bled dry. The forces Her Majesty granted us were enough to take Dresden, but we need more troops to hold it. Furthermore, the army was assembled in great haste after the assault on Canabres and was never adequately equipped. Unfortunately, we don't have much time for redeployment. Our scout report that a powerful Baylor, Coram that that demon is already preparing a retaliatory strike on Dresden, but we can rely on freshly constructed Mendevian soldiers. They may not have the skill, but our strength, as always, lies in the number and the fervor of the volunteers joining the Crusades. We can't throw everyone into the meat grinder. We'll just get our youths killed for nothing. We need to select the best among the recruits, or even better, hold a contest. The bravest and most capable will join the Crusaders. Tournament arc? The death count is always highest in the infantry. Its purpose is to serve as a shield. It should would be wise to invest our resource in hiring and training heavy footmen with shields to ensure maximum protection. Even if their limits uh even if it limits their mobility, it makes them less threatening to the enemy. Ooh. Shielded footmen. That's actually pretty good. An ominous smile spread across Wenduak's face. I've noticed that not all of your uplanders are equal. While some eat and drink all they like, others sit in stone cells or gongs on end, feeding on refuse. You call those criminals? They have no rights, so why don't we force them to join our ranks and get ourselves a fresh supply of troops? You know what? She's right. She's right. What are we going to do with all the criminals? Feed them all day? Throw them into the army and send them as demons. You know, they kill a demon that is one le one year off of their sentence. <laughs> That's actually a pretty good uh, plan, actually. Uh, uh, Captain Odin, what does the military council do? The military council determines strategy for our troops, enact army reforms, approve new equipment standards, and make decisions on all issues regarding military actions on the front line. Uh, who is this Baylor? The most trusted servant to the demon lord Descari. Among the historian of the Mendevian Crusades, he is known as a strategist of the world wound. He's not as renowned as Mendago or Minago, uh, the conqueror of Dresden, or uh, Hepzamira, the daughter of Baphomet. But he has claimed the most major victories over the forces of Mendev. He's a great general and quite possibly one of the best tacticians in the entire abyss. Uh, Mephistopheles would like to, uh, you know, talk to you. I've been studying his style of warfare for years. He may seem like an ordinary demon, another typical war taskmaster, but that's a fallacy. Like the, like a beast following a scent, 
He senses weakness in his enemy's defenses and strike at them, sending soldiers to bring targeted carnage. His uncanny charisma attracts more and more soldiers to him, so he's never short on troops and sacrifice them like pawns whenever he pleases in order to achieve his victories. Um, the Baylor, not, not ever going to say his name again, is the face of the demon host. For many years, I've been gathering research on him, preparing for the day our armies would clash with one, uh, with his once more. I hope my council will help you defeat him, but so far, <sighs> Kor, I'm just going to call him Kor now, is known, uh, has known no defeat. Alright, I have a question for my advisors. Uh, Sila, have you ever commanded an army before? No, not on a scale like this, of course not. But I fought evil, and I know its tricks. Besides, war make people callous, and it's always useful to have a paladin advisor around to remind you, at a crucial moment, what we're actually fighting for, right? Regil, why do you wish to sit on the military, military council? I have command experience, and I intend to impart the crusade at least a modicum of the discipline and rigidity, rigidity of the Hell Knights. The quality of the Mandevian staff currently available to you leaves much to be desired. <laughs> that much is certain. Wow. Wenduag, why do you even want to be here? And why not? I used to lead our tribe hunters through the most dangerous caves, and we always return with spoils. I know how to win, how to think ahead, and how to be merciless. And I'll certainly be a better advisor to you than this uplander. And after everyone literally insulted you, Captain Odin, tell me a little about you. <laughs> I serve on the front lines of Bendevian army for over 25 years, and in that time, I've gained a wealth of combat experience. I'm considered one of the foremost experts on tactics and strategy in Queen Galfrey's officer corps. I've spent my whole life studying the crafts of warfare, and I'm familiar with the thought of all prominent military leader of the last five centuries. Furthermore, I wholeheartedly believe that the, in the tradition of Mendez's military art, and will gladly share my knowledge with you, Commander. Okay. I want to hear my uh, the opinions. Sila, do you really, do we really need only the bravest and most capable for our infantry? I mean. We can't send untrained rookies to the slaughter. We have the right to command only those who are ready for battle. Those who can defeat the enemy. We must find out who has the skill and the guts. Contests are perfect for that, and a little ex excitement for our warriors couldn't hurt either. We won't get that many winners, but their strength will come from their prowess, not their numbers. Your proposal would leave us with an infantry full of selfish risk-takers dreaming of glory and valor. That is a bad material for a soldier. The infantry role is to be a shield for the archers and mages. All they require to do is follow orders and hold the line, unto victory or death. Ambitions, ambitious loner cherry-picked through contests of skill are not fit to perform this duty. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. Um, Regia, why do you insist on shield-bearers? The infantry is a meat shield intended to catch the blade of the opposing army in its flesh. The shield must be reliable. That is all that is required of it. That is why I would like to see well-armored shield bearers as our foot soldiers. We must have options of pitting ranks of footmen against tides of rampaging demons, knowing with certainty that they will not scatter or die until they have completed their task. When do I, is it wise to rely on scoundrels and criminals? I don't plan to rely on them. I plan to rely on the chain of archers who will follow them and shoot anyone who dares to run. The foot soldiers will have no choice but to fight, and those hardened criminals know how to fight for their lives. It's true they won't change, charge into battle shouting your name, master, but their upkeep will cost us a pittance. They'll serve their purpose as meat shields, and no one will shed any tear over their demise. Since they are wrong the tribe, let them atone for their deeds with blood. Besides, their other uplanders also have prisons filled with criminals, don't they? We can borrow them. Our neighbors will be only too happy to have fewer mouths to feed. 
This is like some wicked parody of redemption. Giving them a chance to turn over a new leaf is one thing, but hurting them to their deaths with bow train on their backs? This is not what the Crusades should be. I don't know about that. That sounds like a great plan. Um, Captain Odin, you just want to gather up some recruits from Mendev? Yes, institute a draft and try to amass as many new soldiers from Mendev and other lands as we can. We already drawn our strength from our, our zeal and our determination to oppose evil. If we start holding contests or selections, we'll turn a holy crusade into a job for the chosen few and scare away future volunteers. If we try changing our tried and true tactics, we'll lose valuable time and our army is needed uh, of fresh blood right now. The shield those misfit losers are going to form will be flimsy and shit. <laughs> we better support it with a line of crossbowmen at the rear who won't let them take off the first sign of trouble. Hmm. Okay. I knew that the criminal one was going to be an evil choice, and that's probably the one I'm going to pick, honestly. But let's see what the effects of our choices will be. The main barracks provide weekly recruitment growth for champions. All footmen are promoted to champions. What the hell are champions? They have 26 hit points compared to the 42 hit point footmen. Their damage will be a plus 14 to hit, plus 5. And damage is... Uh, a D3 plus 15, while this is a D3 plus 6. So you want me to basically turn my frontline tanks into glass cannons. That sounds horrible. And their AC would be reduced to thir I mean to 8 from 13? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. That seems like a terrible choice. Like, footmen already die so easily. Reducing their HP and AC even more? This is just like, if they don't hit something before they get damaged, they're going to die so quickly. Yeah, no, not champions. Champs are terrible. All right, so shield bearers. Uh, footmen gets promoted shield bearers. Let's see here. There you go. Shield bearers, 164 hit points, an AC of 11, unarmed strike plus 4, a D3 plus 4, and 1 damage reduction. Uh, an arm strike plus 5, a D3 plus 6. So less damage, a lot more health. Uh, what about this choice? All footmen are converted to conscripts. What are conscripts? 78. Okay, so conscripts are just a little bit better footmen. So they don't specialize in anything, and that's it. Alright, what about the evil choice? Uh, all footmen are con promoted to convicts. Convicts have less HP. Oh no. Less AC. Um. They have plus 6 to hit, but less damage too. Wow. The main barracks provide weekly recruitment of convicts. Cheap and numerous infantry with good fighting skills but low morale hmm uh shield and spear historically are a safe bet yeah but they don't give me shield and spear they just give me like pure shields <laughs> like hmm so basically my choices are a little bit better footmen in every single aspect this is basically the you know uh that or i can like go full on glass cannon or i can just stick with my evil and uh use criminals you know what since we're doing an evil run let's just get criminals drag out the criminals out of their dungeons and make infantry of them I'll find the meanest jailers to keep that riffraff in check. We'll need to scare our new soldiers real good, so don't even think about running away. 
Thank you for your time, Commander. When the reform are finished and the ranks of our infantry are replenished, I will assemble the military council to discuss new decisions. Oh god, thank Oh my god, we still have more. Okay. Hail Commander! Captain uh Harmatin, chair of your staff council, by order of Her Majesty Queen Galfrey, here to deliver a report. I'm on this council too. We'll be uh, racking our brains on how to improve troop morale. I reckon the key is to back up our words with actions, lead our soldiers by example, and they'll be eager to follow. Drawing on my experience as a uh, paralictor, my advice is to maintain calculated moderation in every regard, be it an incentive or a penalty. And to be decisive, we have no need for doubt or turmoil. I am doomed to be your advisor, but do you know of what that means? That you are doomed to listen to my advice. To start things off, here's an incredible, uh, incredibly novel and deep thought for you. Loyalty, passion, and morale. All these can be easily bought with money. Ah, oh, Darren, you speak my favorite words. Money can buy everything. I agree. Commander, permission to report. We've encountered a problem. Although we're still getting volunteers, we're now seeing cases of desertion. Many who joined Dresden campaign believe that their duty has been fulfilled with the victory, and they are not keen on staying in the garrison. Those from Canabres wish to return home and rebuild their ruined city. Lastly, there are those who are afraid of lingering in a place where demon might show up with a rel retaliatory expedition at any moment. My suggestion is to improve living condition for the privates, raise their pay, give them extra rations, and reward those who have distinguished themselves on the battlefield with commendation and gifts. Soldiers don't want to leave armies that appreciate them. I feel for these folks, but we have to convince them to stay. I think we ha we might get some help from the servants of the gods. They'll tell the soldiers that the danger has not yet passed and inspire them to keep up the fight against evil. As long as the wound is open, the world um, is in danger. We can't just go home and live lives like we used to, no matter how badly we want that to happen. Most of the crusaders are volunteers, but they have no right to subvert military discipline. That kind of attitude is tantamount to treason, regardless of who expresses it. We have to identify the instigator, arrest them, and administer harsh punishment to make an example out of them. This problem is quite simply solved with coin, but handing money out to privates is practically throwing it away. We need to pay the officers handsomely, then they'll figure out a way to raise their support and its morale. <sighs> Tell me, Captain, what does the Staff Council do? In short, we make sure that whenever orders are given, they are executed properly. Our job is to keep the soldiers' morale high so they always follow their officer's command without question. As for the officers themselves, we look out for any unseemingly or incompetent types who subvert the troops' trust. Okay, I have questions. Sila, what do you bring to the council? It's self-explanatory, really. I'm not fighting for a sawmill here. This is a crusade against the abyss. When we're up against demons, you bring a paladin. It's a rule that is tried and very much true. Uh, Regal, what kind of help should I expect from you? I have extensive experience in being, com uh, being in command and as a Hell Knight. I possess a firmness that some of your other officers may be lacking. The essence of my counsel is not to spoil your troops, but to maintain their discipline strategically. Amidst the chaos of war, a general has to be a beacon of order and purpose for their soldiers. They will be just as grateful to receive rewards or lashes from such a general, and most importantly, they won't even think to disobey their orders. Darren, what are you going to do in this council? Mostly, I just waiting for it to end, but since I have little choice, I will give you some advice and on how to charm your subordinates. Be they be people of importance or simple competitors, I tell you the biggest secret straight away. Free. Money. Gold has most miraculous power there is. Captain, why did the queen appoint you to my council? I've been in the Assyrian infantry for a hundred years. Excuse me? What, what race are you? 
fighting for three pharaohs. Then, after I joined the Crusaders, I served Her Majesty Gallifrey for two more decades. I dare to hope that I've gained decent experience all those years. Seriously, what race are you? You live for hundreds of years? You must be an elf. Uh, I see. Alright, let's discuss each option in further detail. Tila, what's your plan? The situation is not that dire. Morale is high and we just won a major victory, so some have let down their guards. We have to call for priests and paladins to get it through to the volunteers that is still early for celebration. If they leave for their homes today, Dresden will fall again tomorrow, and the day after, demons will show up at their for doorstep. Servants of the guards are indeed the master of sweet-talking others into dying free of charge, although all through petty, well, pretty words. But when the choice comes down to inspiring uh, preaching our homemade pies, nine of every ten will look for comfort in their home at their table. The incentive needs to be more substantial than wasted breath. Regal, what do you suggest? There's no place in the army for the mindset of playing soldier today, then going home tomorrow. These dangerous ideas must be suppressed with the utmost harshness. We'll identify the most vocal rabble rousers and exact punishment on them as an example to others. They may be volunteers, but they join the ranks of the crusaders. We can't abet to their rejections of their responsibilities or will be headed towards complete chaos and therefore defeat. That's a great plan if you want our soldiers to run back home twice as fast. They came here with their own volition. They must be convinced to, uh, we must convince them to stay, not terrorize them into fighting. Darren, in your opinion? Our forces are in good spirits. It's just that the euphoria of victory has gone to a few heads. No one can sober them up quicker than the officers, especially those of lower rank. We'll give them our dear oath. We'll give our dear oaths all those uh, sergeants and corporals a bonus on the sly, then promise to sweeten the deal once they convince the volunteers to stay. Perhaps they will do so over a a uh, beer mug or maybe with a broken nose why bother solving problem yourself when you can just push them off on someone you pay you your bot loyalty will run out even sooner than your gold once soldier turn into uh, profiteers instead of following orders they start appraising them yep they'll wonder whether or not it's worth their while to obey their general i hardly need to explain the effect this will have on discipline Captain Hartman, what do you advise? The volunteers believe that we've almost won. Great, let's not ruin this pretty illusion. Instead, we'll turn it into our advantage. We'll increase rations and pay for privates, and rewarding the most distinguished with commendation and gifts. Who would abandon the victory, uh, the victors when they provided you with good food and even better coin? It's naive to expect the troops won't understand that we are just trying to appease them. An army cannot stand if it's held together by handouts and desperate promises. We shouldn't lie to our soldiers. If we build up flimsy illusions now, the demons will shatter them later. Those fighting alongside us must recognize the seriousness of the situation instead of celebrating victory when the war has just began. Okay. Let's go over the choices. What will Sila do? Unlock the Glory of Heroes Decree. Um, Crusade morale increased by 5 to 10. Regal's choice. Uh, crusade morale increased by 16 to 25. Recruitment growth for trainable recruits reduced by 10%. The cost of recruiting mercenary increased by 10%. That doesn't sound so bad, actually. Um, simply because most of my trainable recruits is already cut down by 50%. And that is because I am uh, the Mythic Path Lich. So all of my... Human recruits get cut down by 50%. But whenever I fight an army, uh, an opposing army and win, I think 50% of their troops gets converted into undead, and that fills up my army. So reducing growth is not that bad. My growth is already next to nothing. So, uh, and the cost of increasing re uh, mercenary units, who cares? I have infinite money, so that, that does not bother me. All right, Deeran, what about you? Um, Crusade Morale increased by 15 to 20, and that's it. It cost me 4,000, though. It doesn't matter. But, let's see here. 16 to 25. 15 to 20. 
and for you it's 10 by 15 and it cost me 300 uh, materials Eh, I think Regal's plan is the best here we can repeat it 14 days every 14 days to increase the morale by 16 to 25 I think that's the best hunting down mutiny we are playing an evil evil character anyways so that that sounds very fitting Regal, find the instigators and make an example of them. Affirmative. I already have an eye on the most spirited ones. I'll apprehend them immediately. Thank you, Commander. Should any other difficulty arise that require your attention, I'll deliver a new report promptly. Is that it? Are we done? Oh my good god. That only took an hour. Jesus. Wherever my legs carry me. Who knew being a ruler of a kingdom was so much reading? <laughs> um, okay, let's see here. Attack out of nowhere, dragon hunt, demon heresy. Visit Blackwater Clan settlement, find out about what happened to here. Uh House of Death. Build a ziggurat. Night Gambler. CO Soul. Uh Social. Alright, so I have to go back into town, but before I do that, though, let's uh, manage some uh, crusade affairs. Then we'll go into town and talk to a bunch of people. Oh, here we go. Events. The fate of the Altar of the First Retriever. The craftsmen are ready to use the web enveloping the altar of the first retriever to create a relic for the commander. But the decision needs to be made what kind of relic it's gonna be. A uh, shirt, please. Because I can wear this under my armor. And I need something to wear under my armor. So, go with that. The hatred of the descendant of Zakori towards the arcane spellcaster has no no bound the representative of several tribes demand that majors not be allowed to serve in their units uh, okay excuse me because you do not have wolchiff among your companions well that's not fair you haven't given me back wolchiff yet did i do something wrong that he like no longer returning huh anyways remove mages from the unit what the hell does this do 12 barbarians are recruited at the commander's headquarters. Barbarians? Damn, they deal a lot of damage and has a high chance to hit. Low AC though. Stand up for the mages. Nine wizards are recruited. Oh my god, yes. Uh, add XP point. Make the former Sakurian fall in line. Uh, no, I, I like wizards. Give me wizards. Thank you. Okay, army. Military Tribunal. Relic. Okay. Others. Ziggurat. A Ziggurat. The Ziggurat has been constructed. Past decree. Okay. So it takes 30 days. Oh my god. Earbeth has been appointed a squad of the Vanguard. Yeah, sure. Put her there. Not enough resources. Form a logistics council. Uh, okay, I can't do that. The fate of the Fallout's Daybreak. Uh, the relic of will be augmented. Sure. All right. Nothing we can do there. Convicts, archers, and mounted scouts. Dang, we get 41 convicts every single day. That's not bad. 
I mean, not not every single day, every single week. God forbid it's every single day. Um, apothecary. Okay, we don't need that. Uh, energy point income. We don't have one of these already? Oh. 